everyone this is Patricia and today I have uh, just a really quick and easy tip on how to turn any crocheted scarf pattern into a cowl or neck gaiter project and you know this can be a really fun thing to do to give uh, for Christmas gifts or to do for craft fairs because one of the benefits of doing a, a cowl rather than a scarf is it uses a uh, you know quite a bit less yarn and you're basically making it like half the size of what a scarf pattern would be so i have a couple of uh, um, cowl patterns on my channel and so this is one here and you know they don't have to be very wide i mean this would just be a really basic scarf it's this here is just five and a half inches wide and um and then i have another one here this is a, a wider well what I mean by wide I guess I mean depth this this way here this one here is eight inches and um, I'm not going to put these on because I'm going to demonstrate something here um, and yeah so you can take you know any scarf pattern that you like and make it into a cowl you're just basically making it shorter now I did have um, this tutorial here that I recently did on this stash busting scarf and when I was demonstrating this one I was showing how the exact same pattern can be um, the exact same pattern can be made bigger by just using a larger yarn and so this was the exact same uh, pattern but it ended up finishing quite a bit wider and as I was working on this I thought this would make a really good cowl <laughs> so I just thought I would share this this with you so basically what you do is you just crochet the length of um, the pattern until you get it it's it's generally it's about half the length of a scarf but so you just crochet along and then you try it on and what you want is for the fabric to lay like this and then you're going to cross the fabric over and this one here I am going to um, put buttons on so I'm allowing a, about an inch here for two more rows to create buttonholes and I'll show you how to do that and uh, so you just lay these edges this edge here and then you have this long edge here you want to line those up and uh, just like that and if you want to leave room for buttonholes you leave that that inch or so and then the collar will just fold over on most cows you tend to just fold the collar over like that and then it looks lovely in that way and if you don't want to add buttons you could just use like um, a scarf pin or a um, uh, brooch or a stick pin something like that and especially if you can get some really funky designs and you can just use them like that and you're done it's it's that easy um yeah so you know it's it's super simple crochets up quickly uses you know half the yarn and if you're using the the pins like this it's even easier and the general rule of thumb is is the the narrower the fabric is this way um the shorter the piece would be so this one here at five and a half inches it's finished length was 28 inches and this one here at six inches once I add this inch here for the buttonholes the finished length is 30 and then the the wider one with at eight inches it finished at 33 inches so sort of the wider it goes this way the longer it has to be this way but you know you can just be playful with that and yeah and then you can make all kinds of really neat uh, cowls or gaiters whatever you want to call them um, so you know if you're happy with the pins you can stop here if you want to know how to work in buttonholes I'll show you how to do that next all right so once you have your fabric uh, the length that you want you're going to lay it with your loop here down on this side and you just bring this side down here and this here like that and then this is where we're going to carry on creating the loops for the buttons so I know that my rows for every two rows I need about an inch if you're using a number four medium weight yarn you might only need like a half an inch or three quarters of an inch and then what you want to do is um, lay out your buttons 
and see how they look. Now these buttons are uh, an inch and a quarter, and I think that's a really good size for this size scarf. You could use chunkier buttons. You could use a couple of big, bigger chunkier buttons or maybe like one really big button like that. That you'd have to make a pretty big loop for your, um, you'd have to have like allow this here in order to work in a big button. I'm not gonna show you how to do that. I'm gonna show you how to do the three buttons or two, I guess you could do. And um, I have these buttons here. These are a little bit smaller and they're in a purple color. And, uh, but I think I like these ones here. And just to show you this yarn that I'm using, I'm gonna put these back because I think they look very pretty. Uh, the yarn that I'm using is this Camden Wool Big. It's loops and threads, so that's a Michaels brand. It's a number five bulky yarn. Yeah, I'm using an eight millimeter crochet hook, and this color is taupe. So again, if you're using a number four medium weight yarn, it'll look a little bit different. Um, but next, I'll show you how to calculate where your buttonholes should go. Now, what you wanna do is you wanna take the number of stitches you have in your um, in the row, so I know I have 13 stitches, and you wanna find the middle stitch. Now, if you have an even number of stitches, then it's going to be the middle two stitches. So I'll go back here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven would be the middle of 13. And then you wanna divide the the you want to make the spaces evenly with this number of stitches left so there'll be six stitches on this side so I and what we're going to do with this stitch marker is you're going to be skipping this stitch that's going to create the hole if you had um, even number of stitches you'd be skipping two stitches here so I'm going to go back one two three stitches and then I have one, two, three more stitches here. So I need to decide where do I want that button. And so I'm going to place it in the fourth stitch here from the center, which will give me three stitches in between and two stitches to the end. So if this was um, 15 stitches wide, then it would be perfect. You'd have three stitches and then a stitch we're going to skip, three stitches, a stitch we're going to skip, skip, and then here one, two, three, and then the stitch we're going to skip. Oh, I've done a chain one and turned my work, by the way. I meant to mention that. Um, so, but in this case, we have two stitches on the end. If you had 15 stitches wide, you'd have three stitches on the end. That would be great. And, um, and then I'll show you how you're going to play around to fit these buttons in. It's gonna be a custom job. This isn't exactly how it'll work out for you because it depends on the style of the stitch and uh, how big a buttons you choose and like that. But I'll show you next how, so, so basically what you wanna do is you wanna divide your three buttons between the width of your scarf depending on how many stitches you have, starting at the center and then working your way out to the sides. All right, so we're going to do two rows using just a single crochet. So um, whatever your stitch pattern has been on the body of the, the scarf pattern that you're using, you're going to switch to doing a single crochet. So I've done a chain one and turn my work and no matter what your stitch pattern is, you'll do a chain one and turn your work. Then you will do a single crochet under both loops of the first stitch in a single crochet under both loops of the second stitch and maybe the third stitch or the fourth. It depends on you know how your stitch markers have worked out. And then once you get to where the buttonhole is gonna be, you're going to chain two for this chunky yarn. Now, if you're using a number four medium weight yarn, you may need to chain three. Um, if you're using bigger buttons and you're skipping two stitches, you may need to chain three or four. This is where you have to sort of play around with it. So you're going to skip that stitch and do a single crochet into the next three stitches. And so this is just setting you up for the buttonholes. 
Now the way you can check to see if the button will fit, you have your hole there and you're just going to take the button in and look at that, it fits. If um, this was uh, too tight, then you would want to take out a chain if it was, or you want to add a chain and if it was too loose, you would take out a chain. So that's how you kind of want to play with it. You, and as I say, you may be skipping two stitches if you're using a smaller weight yarn. So, so just play around until you get that hole to the right size and that's divided equally in between your pattern. So here I am, I'm at this stitch here, so I'm going to chain two. So I know that the chain two works good for this size. I'm going to skip this stitch, go into the next stitch with the single crochet and do three single crochets in a row here. And then a chain two, skip a stitch and then finishing with two single crochets at the end of this row. So this is sort of the, the fussy part where you have to figure out your uh, the number of spaces to miss for your buttonholes and the number of chains to put in between. But you know, the crochet is quite forgiving um, for those button swips to, to pop through and they literally pop through. So then once you've done that, then all you do is a chain one, turn your work. So then starting on this row, you just do a single crochet into the first stitch, single crochet into the second stitch. And now you're at your chain two space. And here you're going to do three single crochets into the chain two space. Now, if you're using the number four yarn, you might do four or five single crochets, but you wanna fill that in quite nicely. And, um, and then you go and do a single crochet into the next three stitches, just one single crochet. And then into the chain two space or chain three space, whatever you have, you're going to do at least three single crochets, but you may do four or five. It uh, totally depends. And that sort of just creates a little bit of a fan you know, it's just sort of fans that out a little bit. And then one, two, three, and one, two, three, and then one and two. Because remember, I started this row with two single crochets. Now, if, you're, if your scarf is wider, you might have three at the end or, you know, your count will be a little bit different. But that's the general idea of how you can work in your buttonholes. So then all you do is a chain one and fasten that off. I don't have my scissors here. So you'd cut a tail, darn in your tail ends and then uh, attach your buttons. So I will, I'll come back, I'll show you again where to put your buttons and then I'll attach mine. All right, so here we go. Um, and you can use the hand steamer to steam the fabric if you like before you go on to the next step. But here are my buttonholes. So you just lay this out with, um, this is the top side of your buttonholes. So you're going to lay that down. So this is like your wrong side of fabric. And then you'll bring this side over this way and this one over that way, just like that. And then you just wanna place your buttonholes there, your buttons there. And so you can just use like um, an erasable fabric marker to put your, um, your marks in there. And then you can just sew your buttons along that edge, just where those, those marks will be. So the buttons go along this edge here. And then you just sew on your buttons. I'm going to do that and I'll be back for the final reveal. Welcome back. So I have my buttons sewn on. And so then all you do is pop them through 
the buttonholes like that. And there you go. And it's all done. And you know, just super, super easy to do. And again, you can use any scarf pattern that you like and that and use that to create um, a cowl or a neck gaiter or whatever you want to call them. So it's that easy. So you can do it with buttons or just with a pin as I showed you in the beginning of the video. And it's that simple. So be creative, be playful, try different patterns, different size buttons, different size buttonholes, you know, you can just be playful with this. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more creative and inspiring content. And again, I'm, I'm not uploading a lot of content anymore, but I will be uh, adding stuff every now and then. So we'll see you next time.